Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody here in High Performer Success Habits for Entrepreneurs. I'm Jessica. Welcome to those of you who are new members. Pretty much everyone's a new member because we just started the group a couple of weeks ago. Congratulations for getting here. Um, I'm excited to be here with you and to be delivering, <clears throat> pardon me, to be delivering a live training every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Pacific time. We got started a little bit late today with some technical stuff, but set a reminder on your phone or on your calendar so that you're here for these trainings. They're always going to be impactful, very practical, and I'm always going to give you something to do, to take away. So come prepared with some notes um, and post questions. On Monday, I encourage you to, or any day of the week, to post questions here in the group that you would like me to address during the live trainings, okay? So today's topic is mid-year review, okay? And five questions that you need to be asking yourself. Full disclosure, I'm taking some of this from my coach, Brendan Burchard, who is the king of performance, right? And so um, of high performance. So these are really, really good um, questions um, that you want to be applying. And most people avoid this. I know because early on as an entrepreneur in one of my first businesses, this was the type of information that I avoid it, you know, like some people avoid doing the books and the numbers and you don't want to look at all of that stuff, but it's really critical to your business, whether you are a one person shop right now, or you've grown, you've got a team and you're scaling. Okay. So we want to do things like high performers so that right. High performer means efficient, focused, not leaking energy, not constantly busy. And the reason that is important as an entrepreneur is so that you don't end up like a lot of people that you hear talking about burnout and not having time for their, their family or quality time or time to work out. Okay. So when you look at these things, <clears throat> I don't want you to get this automatic feeling of, oh, that's more work and like shy away from it if it's not super easy or in your wheelhouse. I want you to look at it as, okay, these are tools that if I put the time and attention into it is going to make my life easier so that I have all of that freedom, right? So let's dive right in. We're halfway through the year. That means you have about six months, five months full, but about six months behind you. And that's momentum. Whatever you have done up until this point, that's the momentum you have now. Might not be a lot, it might be a whole lot. Whatever it is, there are questions you need to be asking yourself in your business right now. Um, and it's really around what areas can you focus on and improve, right? What can I focus on right now and improve based on what I see as evidence and results in the past five, six months, right? So no, no matter where you are, as long as you're moving forward, you're going in the right direction, okay? So we want to get you crystal clear on what to do so you can carry out the year with even more impact and success. Do you guys like that? Let me know how that sounds. <clears throat> more impact and success. That's what I want. Okay. So question number one, are you hitting your revenue goals? Are you hitting your revenue goals? There is power in knowing your number, having a number that you are working towards, right? And having a plan behind it. So you've got to be intentional about what you're working towards. That's why in our high performers club, we always have our clients map out an entire year just focused on one big goal, one big vision, and then we work backwards from there. Okay, so where are you in terms of hitting your number? Did you have a quarter two number? You know, did you have a monthly number? Do you have a yearly number? And if you don't, ask yourself why, right? So you don't have to be numbers driven, but you do have to have something that you're working towards so that you actually put some action behind it, right? And you create a little urgency. You put yourself on the line. You, you host the events. You send the emails. You, you make the sales offers. You're not going to do any of that if you don't have a clear vision um, and also a number to work towards, okay? So 
Can you identify the reasons that you have not hit that number if you haven't? So this was a really good one for me to look at when I did this. So anything I teach, I also do. Okay. So I compared where I am now to two years prior. And I realized I was spending a lot more two years ago than I am now. And so for me, I realized the growth that I was having then was different than the growth that I'm having now. And I realized I have not been spending as much as I could be in my business. I'm not spending what I was two years ago. And it was such a great eye opener for me. And I got to go to my team and say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. I was planning to do an ad campaign at the end of the year. We're going to move it up, you know, and everybody got excited and got behind that. And now we have our plan to put more money, you know, into advertisement and you got to get excited about those kinds of things, right? Because you've got to ask yourself, if I'm not hitting my goal, what is it? That's keeping me from that. For me, it was I needed to increase my spending. For you, it could be you haven't launched anything yet, right? So you've got to ask yourself, what do I have to do or build in order to meet that goal? You know, maybe you need to hire an assistant. Maybe you need to do, um, maybe you need to run ads. You know, wherever it is in your current circumstance of your business, you've got to look at the evidence and you've got to do an assessment. What do I need to do or build around me or hire or outsource in order to reach that goal? And then don't stop reaching for it. Okay. So question number one, are you hitting your revenue goals? Number two, are you consistently putting out high quality content, right? Are you consistently, are you in a rhythm? Brendan calls it a, um, um, a, um, what the a content rhythm. Are you in a content rhythm? This is how you build the know, like, and trust with your audience. This is how you establish trust and you create connection that lasts over a long time, a lifetime, a long period of time, right? But often where I see people get stuck is they send a couple emails here and there. They do a couple blog posts. Maybe they start a podcast, but then they're not consistent. They go live here and there, but there's no consistency. There's no rhythm. And so people don't expect to see you, right? And they don't, they don't get, they don't start. They, when people can hear from you often and consistently, they start to understand your language and what it is you're teaching and they know what to go to you for. But if you're not in a consistent rhythm on social media, in your emails, in whatever way that you connect, and really you should be doing both of those things, then you're not building that. So even if it's something small, make sure you're posting content weekly that is valuable that is serving your mission and putting your voice out into the world, right? So establishing a rhythm you can stick to, that will be a game changer. In the beginning for me, I just committed to once a week. Now, of, of course, I'm daily, some, you know, sometimes two or three times daily, but you've got to stop somewhere. Don't shoot too high. If you haven't been doing anything, don't like say, okay, I'm going to do it every single day. I would say start once or twice a week, get consistent with that for a month, and then see how you can increase it, okay? Number three, how am I doing with my community initiatives? What are you doing to build community, right? And to activate your community, right? Like this is one of the things that I'm now doing is I closed my other group and said, hey, I'm going to focus solely on entrepreneurs and I'm going to come into the Facebook group. I'm going to deliver a, a live training every week that is specific to entrepreneurs and business owners. And on top of that, every month, I'm going to give them something valuable that they can download, a resource, an activity, any, something that I get to share with them that starting in July that you get to download and use and apply. Right. So this is me. This is a community initiative, right, to help you guys feel connected to your to to me, but mostly to your mission. 
and what you're wanting to do out in the world with your community, right? So at least every quarter, you should be coming up with a plan to really support your community, right? And to really activate them. You want your audience to resonate with your message and really get behind you, okay? That's question three. Question four, and this may be above and beyond, and if it is, that's okay. This comes directly from Brendan Burchard. How are your evergreen campaigns? Okay, so if you don't know what an evergreen is, it just means something, it could be as simple as a free opt-in, like a lead magnet. So like a free um, ebook or a quiz or something like that, that is on an evergreen cycle, right? So meaning you're constantly fun funneling people, pointing them to that whether it's through your email, a, a, a true evergreen would be having ads run to it. But I want to keep it simple for you. I'm simplifying a lot of these pieces so that wherever you are, you know, you can really think of it at your level. So do you have something that is just existing out there that you can consistently point people to that gets them into your email list, gets them into your Facebook groups, um, so that you can serve them. You want to also then look at it. I remember I had like a, a, what I'm talking about, like a freebie that was for a long time, going on for a long time. And then finally I said, let's look at the metrics of it. And I realized it wasn't doing as well as I thought. So we shifted it, right? We, we, we made another one that's doing, doing better. So you've got to audit your stuff too, right? Measure how it's doing. So this gets to be like, if you haven't, like, if you're listening to all this and you're like, yeah, I'm good with one, two, three, one of these is going to jump out at you. And if this is the one that's jumping out at you, that you don't have anything that's consistently generating leads, I would say this is a great area to focus on for the rest of the year. Because when we get to November and December, really December through the beginning of January, that is when people spend the most money the entire year. And so online businesses, all business, but especially online businesses, that's where you make a big bulk of your revenue. So think about it. If you put the time in right now to do lead generation and run ads, if that's where you are, um, if that's where you're, you're able to do, you're going to be in a really good position come the end of the year. Don't underestimate this part. Okay. And then fifth, how are you doing with creating peers in the industry? Are you making an effort to connect with others in your industry and network? This is so critical. So right now I'm in two free masterminds that were created, small ones, you know, like seven, eight people, in addition to the paid stuff that I do, but that were created by other peers in my industry so that we can meet once a month, share ideas, share what's working, not what's not working. This isn't like a buddy thing where you just get on the phone with people and hey, oh, motivational. No, this is where you're working with people who can teach you something. They can teach you something. You can teach them something. You promote for each other. You know, you, you share ideas. This is really, really important. It sounds super simple, but it does, it makes a big difference in how you grow. You cannot grow your business by yourself. Okay. You cannot make an impact by yourself. So lock arms with, you know, really key players and, and serve, be generous with how you support them. And also it will come back to your return. Okay. So we have six months left in the year for you to get really clear um, on what you're going to focus on and to really look at those five questions and decide, you know, which one of these right now, especially can I focus on for the rest of the year and give yourself some grace. You may not be where you want to be this year. I'm not where I want to be this year. Right. But give yourself grace and do what needs to be done now between now and the end of the year. And it will make a huge difference. Remember, wherever you want to be, you want to make your decisions based on that. Don't make your decisions based on where you are now, whatever your limitations are now. 
make your decisions based on where you want to go. So when you're looking at those five things, what's in the gap and which one of those five can I focus on now to really celebrate at the end of the year, how far I've come from right now, the end of June till the end of December. Remember, that's the biggest money maker on in any business and online. Okay, guys, thanks for being here. Share